Can you talk a little more about, um, a lot of people have been wondering if Kaylee had a stalker, if that was really true? I said this, she's a pretty girl, her friends are really pretty, so them attracting attention was, it was pretty common wherever they went. So I think she attracted attention, whether that's a dedicated person following her around, maybe not. Families trying to piece this together, of course, they have the most harrowing question of all, which is, what are they going to do now without their daughter, their sister? Very hard uh, for them. And it's why, a big reason that we have to make sure that this has gotten right and gotten right as quickly as possible. We're back now with News Nation's Brian Enton. You just saw him doing those interviews. He had a great special this weekend, live on scene in Moscow, Idaho. A renowned forensic scientist, Dr. Larry Kobolinsky, uh, private investigator, T.J. Ward. Um, Larry, are you, it mattered to me that they were looking for a K-bar. It's a very, it puts us in a very specific class of weapon that's heavy, that's long, and that really explains why the coroner has been so expressive about the scene and how one person theoretically could have overwhelmed several, whether they're asleep or not. Do you share that line of reasoning or no? I think although there could be more than one person, I'm, I'm really, I think there very well is one perpetrator here uh, with a, a weapon like that using uh, overwhelming force uh, with the, uh, the passion, the anger, the hostility. Uh, he could do a, a serious damage, especially to the neck region. Uh, and I mention that because there would be an inability to vocalize. You can't cry out uh, when you can't get air up out of your airway. So the damage of those stabbings, those knife wounds, could explain why there was no call out to alert other people in the home that an attack was underway. Uh, you have to remember, there's a lot going on here. The autopsy is part of this. There's a lot of lab work going on now. People are working around the clock. Uh, DNA is being uh, performed. Uh, and a lot of the theories that are abound, uh, I, I suspect once we have the facts of things like DNA, trace evidence, fingerprint analysis, I think that will be quite important. Uh, I did hear something about a handprint on the sliding glass door. Uh, which I think may be the point of entry. So that is something worth discussing as well. Uh, I was wondering whether the perpetrator wore gloves or not, but if a handprint was left, uh, if it was by the perpetrator, that could be very important. Whether or not the, the, finger, the, the handprint or the fingerprint is in a database, that's a whole other story. But uh, if that is the point of entry, that's a very important piece of information. Brian, have you heard anything about that and anything in terms of perspective on this confused story of the 911 call the next morning? Those two items, anything on those? Haven't heard anything about a handprint, Chris. We have heard some theories that the killer may have come in on the second floor behind the house, which is sort of ground level in the back through a slider. So it's possible that the handprint could be on the slider and the victims were on the second um, and then the third floor. As for the 911 call, very confusing. We've obviously been trying to get our hands on it. Confusing because there was apparently a call about an unconscious person. One question and theory out here um, is that possibly one of the surviving room roommates found one of the victims inside, came outside, uh, and then collapsed, and someone called 911, and that that was the unconscious person, right. that it wasn't actually one of the homicide victims. Uh, th that, that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot more sense than what we are being told early on. Um, now, we have calls. Dusty, control room camera, what do you got? Yes, we have Nina from, from Wisconsin. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. I'm Nina? sorry, Amy. Amy from Nina, Wisconsin. Excuse me, Amy from Nina, Wisconsin. Chelsea, please take over for Dusty. Um, <laughs> go ahead. What do you have for us tonight? Uh, yes, um, I've been watching News Nation's coverage of this murder since the beginning. Um, hmm. And is it possible the killer was inside the house waiting for the students to get home that night? Is it possible? Yes. Uh, is that something that is indicated by anything we've been told? Uh, no. But Brian, uh, let me make sure in, in terms of, you know, 
the realm of possibility, sure, but there's no indication about police understanding anything about the presence of that person in the timeline, right? Yeah, no indication that the person was hiding in the house, but like you said it, I mean, we don't have a lot of information, so really anything's possible. Right. Um, okay, another call? Yep, another call. We have Jeff from Tiverton, Rhode Island. Oh, hey, Chris. Um, All right. I was wondering why hey, Jeff, how you doing, bud? Hey, good, Chris. Thank you for uh, taking my call. I was wondering why there's still a continued focus and debate about the murders uh, being targeted attacks. I mean, there's a monster out on the loose that's killed four people. From a public safety perspective, what does it matter if they were targeted or not? This person is clearly dangerous either way and could commit more murders. 100% true. Uh, that's why I'm covering it, right? Uh, if we knew that this was an intimate and we know who it is and they're just trying to find him, sure, it's still interesting uh, and you care about it because of those families, but it's not as frightening a, a you know, a, a possibility as what you have right now. It could be a monster, but to your own question, uh, the reason why it matters whether or not they were targeted, it goes to this monster notion. If they were targeted and it's personal, either it's a stalker or it's someone they knew or someone they bothered or someone who had been around, uh, that makes them much more focused on this group of people whom they victimized as opposed to just anyone or a, a serial type of crime, which authorities to this point have said they don't believe. But Larry, uh, is that the right answer? I think so. Absolutely. That's those were the words I was going to say myself. Yes. All right. Appreciate it, Larry. Let's take one more call. OK, uh, we've got Howie. We've got Howie for, from Winthrop, Maine. Hey, Howie, how you doing, bud? What do you got? I'm doing good, Chris. What's on your mind? Yeah. Chris, first off, I want to say my thoughts and prayers go out to the family with this situation. Um, I work security, and I've conducted investigations in terms of timelines of when they look at vehicles and when not. I mean, there's I haven't heard anything about them getting a vehicle that didn't belong to one of the people there, you know, a mystery vehicle. Um, there is no suggestion about whether or not the killer was on foot or otherwise. But in terms of timing and protocol, what do you know? Well, I think um, the the focus of this investigation was inside. I think the, the vehicles are probably secondary. So uh, it was just a matter of of, of timing. I don't think it was anything important. They probably look at the vehicles when they, you know, after they got there and found out what was inside, but I don't think it, it was a target. Their, their main focus is the uh, investigation uh, that was inside the uh, apartment. And we do know that they haven't said anything about a vehicle being missing or that one was left running, you know, any of the obvious indications that they had something to do with the commission of the crime. All right, listen, uh, I appreciate this. I appreciate the calls. We'll keep doing this as an aspect of the coverage. And one thing, you know, you got to know, I only go on what I can show, okay? And I hear something about k Bar Knife, then I'll discuss it. But I have experts here so that we can make sense of what makes sense, all right? I don't play the speculation game beyond the realm of possibility because it's not a sport. You got people who are just devastated by this. Their lives will never be the same no matter what the answers are. So as the information comes, we'll try to make sense with the best minds that I have around me. T.J. Ward, thank you very much. Larry, as always, appreciate it. And Brian, sure. you know, uh, you're doing job, the job right, and I appreciate uh, you being part of the team. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.